This segment sponsored by the Indiana Soybean and Corn Farmers. I am back in Warren, Indiana at this beautiful farm continuing our Growing for the Future series. Let's go chat with Brian. I am back with Brian Warpup with the Indiana Soybean Alliance. Hi. Hi, welcome back. Thank you. It is another windy day, it is. but it feels so good out in nature and on the farm. And I know we have a lot to discuss today around sustainability and really taking care of the soil. But first, I wanted to give us a progress report sure. of our corn. Sure, sure. Yes. It's been about a month since we were out here last and uh, it was about four or six inches tall. Yes. And now it's about waist high once you get out there. So uh, it's, it's, it's June, July and it's growing like it should. Yes, it's been one month and look at this. I mean, it's so cool just to see the step-by-step -step process. And so how long will it take for it to get up much um, higher. It's it's growing about one or two inches a day right now. Okay. Uh, when we get some heat, we get some 80 degrees and plenty of moisture. It'll it'll grow. It's got all the nutrients it needs right now. Mm -hmm. um, so all the fertilizers down. It just needs Mother Nature to uh, let it do its thing. Yes. And at what point will we start to see the corn sprout out? Okay. So it'll be um, about it'll be over our head, and there'll be a tassel that comes out the top okay. of it, and that's when the ear. You'll also see an ear of corn mm -hmm. uh, start. So that'll be about we're about three or four weeks away from that ah, right now okay so that's exciting so the next time i'm here we'll see that which yep. is great and so right now is there anything that you have to continue to do i know you said mother nature but are you still spraying it and adding things yeah, to if, if the in the crop? next few weeks if it does need something mm -hmm. um we will apply that usually do it with a sprayer with a sprayer that we had last mm -hmm. time uh, but as far as a tractor running through it we're done doing all of done. that. Yep, we're done doing all that and we're just letting summer take its course. Yes, and do you do any spot checks? Yes, I'm, uh, I am I am in my field every <laughs> week. I, I do walk in and I get uh, muddy boots out there just yeah. to make sure everything is doing what it's supposed to do and uh, make sure there are no, uh, no problems within mm -hmm. the crop that we uh, have to rectify. All right, wonderful. Well, let's head to the next location. All right. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, Brian, as we were walking through this beautiful cornfield, I would love to learn more about sustainability. So share with me what practices you execute. Sure, uh, sustainability is uh, something that we practice and most farmers do practice and it is uh, kind of leaving the farm or the field or the ground to the next generation or to those that are gonna farm after me. Mm -hmm. um, and so we need to take care of the ground. We need to take yes. care of the land and make sure that uh, this highly productive ground where we're at is around for the next 100, 200 years. Right. Uh, and so that's that's what we do around here. Okay, and so tell me a couple of the steps that you take to preserve the ground. Sure, um, erosion between water and wind is the number one culprit as far uh -huh. as uh, kind of tearing up the ground, mm -hmm. uh, so to speak. Uh, so when we get, we love rain. Uh, we love rain because that's what <laughs> right. feeds our crops. But when we get too much rain mm -hmm. or too much wind, uh, it can really wreak havoc on our ground. So we take some preventative measures mm -hmm. to try to stop the erosive process. Okay. Um, one of those is drainage tile or drainage ditches, which are below ground, mm -hmm. so that when we get a lot of rain, the water, the rain will soak through the ground. Okay. And if we get too much, then it goes to those drainage ditches and gets uh, sent away. Yes, um, and so we're kind of standing in that dip right yes. yeah we got a low spot here this is called a filter strip mm -hmm. or a grass waterway and so when we get a two or three or four inch rain uh -huh. and we got a lot of surface rain this is kind of where we want to channel all the water okay. uh, so that way it doesn't erode the soil um, mm. if there is some soil within that rainwater, it gets trapped in this grass waterway mm -hmm. and doesn't go onto the river yes and so when you say erode the soil are you saying that when the water sits on it with the the mixed soil and water will damage the crops when water moves oh, so whenever okay. whenever you get so much rain and mm -hmm. it starts moving and you get uh, water movement all uh -huh. through the fields um, then this kind of slows it down and stops it. Mm, okay, so Brian, share with me about the ways that you take care of the soil and the water. Um, a lot of it is uh, the tillage practices. So if we don't 
plow the field, uh, which my grandparents, my great grandparents plowed the field. Mm -hmm. um, and what that means is turning the soil over. Uh, we no longer do that because yeah. that exposes all that soil to Mother Nature and the elements that, that she gives us. So by uh, doing certain other tillage practices or minimum tillage practices, it kind of keeps everything intact so that if we do get a weather event, everything kind of stays where it needs to stay. Um, and through your sustainability, so we've talked about pretty much the conservation of water, but I find it interesting how you use this dip and you can actually share water across fields. Can you explain that, Sam? Yeah, so we have a road. I mean, there are roads all over the county, and mm -hmm. so that road is built up, so it holds back water in certain spots and others. So this waterway here that we see actually goes across the road to the next field. So the water that's on that side will end up on this side, mm -hmm. and uh, we filter it out through this filter strip so mm -hmm. the soil stays in this field. And, it, and so with, with the soil, what happens once the water dries? Will the soil just go back to the land or does it destroy the grass? Nope, it, uh, after several years, 10 or 20 years, mm -hmm. we will have to redo all of this because oh. there's so much soil that builds up. Yeah, that's what I'm like, where does the soil yep. go? Yep. And so, but the point of it is it does not affect the crops over here. It does not affect the crops anywhere yeah. else and it does not affect the crops, we'll say downstream. Yes. Also. As it goes, and this is just such a beautiful view. I mean, it's not a bad job, right? Working out in the field on a beautiful day. <laughs> I, I love working out in the country. Yeah, I love this. Yes, day. it's so great. And I know that throughout this process, I'm curious if you do not take the steps for sustainability, what happens? What are the poor outcomes? Well, the poor outcomes is, like I said, we're here to produce food. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the food that every American eats and around the world, uh, a lot of it comes from the United States and comes from where we're located right here. Mm -hmm. And so we want to keep that um, that good, that, that supply ready. Yeah. And so if we let things kind of go to the wayside, then our yield goes down and everything kind of goes down. And we always want to take care of things. I mean, mm -hmm. I, want, I want to be a, a good steward to my land, to anything, so that uh, the next generation that comes after me is, is proud uh, to farm what they farm. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of that, you are fourth generation. That's correct. And so each time you come out and think about ways to improve and develop and innovate yes. your crops, how do you take that process? Well, uh, and I've said it before, I do things different than my dad, yeah. and my dad did things different than my grandpa. Mm -hmm. And so we learn as time goes on um, how to do things better. And uh, we have to be, as farmers here, we have to, to do more mm -hmm. with less fertilizer, less water, less, less nutrients, uh, less mm -hmm. everything. And, but we got to keep on top of our game and produce a good crop uh, so we can feed the world. Yes, and why is it less? Why is it less fertilizer? Um, because of the, um, the technology and the research that has been done, yeah. uh, we don't over apply things like uh, previous generations did. Um, and so if you don't need to put that out there, why do we need to put that out there? Okay. So we kind of spoon feed the crop um, and don't just kind of cast a wide blanket over it and treat everything the same. Right, I love that. It's not overindulging. And I feel Correct. that we learn that within ourselves in the way that we eat and yep. learning yep. nutritional practices, it applies to yes, plants as just well. Just the plants, yep, yes. just like us. Yep. That's awesome. And can you just share how technology really is infused into what you do every sure. day? Sure, so we use a lot of GPS, global positioning system on, on this farm. And so when we're applying fertilizer, we don't want to over apply fertilizer. So what we do is we take soil tests Mm -hmm. throughout all of our, our uh, fields. Mm. And there's a GPS location on that. Mm -hmm. And when we go apply the fertilizer or whatever it is that we're applying, it puts on the right amount. So it doesn't under apply, oh. it doesn't over apply. Yeah. So it's kind of like when you take a blood test, you mm -hmm. know, you know what you need or what you don't need, <laughs> the crop is the same way. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Brian, for sharing new information sure. with us. It's so fascinating learning about the farm. And then I cannot wait to see the growth sure. of the corn Next crops. Next time will be really fun because you'll see the corn. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and if you would like more information about the Indiana Soybean Alliance, we'll have their website listed below and we'll be right back. This segment sponsored by the Indiana Soybean and Corn Farmers.